Hey guys, what is up? It is me. Rosmo. Okay, I know many of you have been requesting this, so I took the chance to check it out. And oh boy, is this something to unpack. Now before I talk about this, let's do a recap. And disclaimer, I did not have prior knowledge about this movie, nor a nostalgic trip with it. So, also I watched the dub. That being said, let's talk about this movie called Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart, or The Boy with the Cuckoo Clock Heart. Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart is a 2013 French animated film based on the concept album of the French band Dionysus. And the music of the film was actually composed by Dionysus themselves. It was directed by these people, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna say it, I don't wanna mispronounce it. And it even had a book of the story, but with a different ending than in the movie. I won't be talking about that, but if I get the chance to read it, then maybe we can do a comparison video in the future? If this video does well, at least. So let's do a recap. So it starts with us following a bird through a city that looks absolutely frozen to the core, while old-timey music plays in the background. But then it quickly shifts to a somewhat rock music, with a clock sound playing along, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> Then we see a Pregananant lady walking through icy terrains. She slipped and then was helped by this doctor. She helps her give birth, which by the look of her after slipping that baby out, seems like she didn't need the help. She wasn't even winded or tired, bruh. Then the doctor sees the baby has a heart of ice. And then we get this absolutely haunting scene of this baby that looks almost two years old out of the womb. And it hangs there as she takes his ice heart out and replaces it with a clock. Then as they stay the night, the mom leaves because she claims that I know for sure she'll make a much better mother than I ever will. Can I just say, I don't like the mom, even though she had little screen time. Not even because she left Jack, but because the doctor helped her unconscious body there, gave birth to her, did surgery on her baby, and gave her shelter for the night, and she was like, <laughs> I'm out. I'm not paying, but you can have my baby. Luckily, the doctor wanted a child, but still. Then we time skip from baby to child, and instantly they show us how, even just by a little bit, how much of a hassle this clock heart is with him having a uh, heart or clock pains in the morning, and having to constantly wind it up or else yeah, he dies. Yeah. He asked the doctor, which is now his adoptive mother called Madeline, to go to the city. Madeline refuses, saying she's busy with repairing or treating people, just like Arthur here who has a xylophone on his back, which got rusty from being exposed in the rain. Anyway, they go either way because it was Jack's birthday and that's what he asked for. Madeline reminds Arthur of the three rules which are- Never touch the hands of my heart, yes, I know. Yes, but what else? Keep, Keep your, your temper, temper under, under control. control. And rule number three is when you don't know and by far the most important, whatever else you do, you must never ever fall in love. So for the first time, he goes out to see the city, and what happened was something we all expected. He fell in love with a random girl who has bad eyesight. The girl hears his clock heart and asks, but he doesn't tell her about the clock heart, so they have this little cute conversation. What's that odd pitter-patter? That's just the rain. You like the rain? Getting wet? No. But the sound it makes? Yes. Jack faints, Madeline swoops in and asks what the girl did and she suddenly had thorns growing around her and ran off. They go back home and Jack sees Luna wearing the same thing the girl wore and she says it's her old uniform. So Jack asks Madeline if he could go to school to find the girl and whatever Madeline says in this scene, I absolutely agree. It'll drive you up the wall. No, I promise. You'll be bored out of your mind. You'll have to read lots of books you despise when here you get to choose which ones to read, not to mention sitting for hours on end without moving. Naturally, you won't be allowed to talk or make any noise, and no daydreaming except at lunch, perhaps. She ultimately agrees, and then as he attends the school, he asks all around for this girl. But then this bully, who looks like an old geezer in the midst of children, picks on Jack because he likes the girl as well. His name is Joe, and he bullies Arthur for years until Jack gets a hold of a letter from Miss Acacia, greeting someone a happy birthday, which Jack assumes to be him, and they fight because they have the same birthday and want Miss Acacia's letter. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit dumb. I must admit. Then as Joe chokes Jack, Jack pokes his eye out like the chat he is and runs off. He'll get arrested if caught, so Madeline helped him escape, and so he did. He has this train ride when he gets chased, which confuses me. Then he meets this filmmaker that helps him with his heart, even just by a little bit. And both of them go to this circus of sorts named Extraordinarium to find Miss Acacia, which he does, and after her amazing song number, he sneaks into her room, which honestly was a very creepy sequence, and we'll talk about 
that later, and I got surprised when she said this line. Do you often tie your laces just outside a girl's door when she's getting changed? Uh, no, no, not very often. And where do you usually land? Do you stumble in her bed or the shower first? It's very, it's a very mature line. Jack finds out that Acacia doesn't remember him, but he still tries to court her. They had time together, which I thought was cute, and even had the little callback to the rain. Hmm, what's that pitter-patter? It's just the rain. You like the rain? Getting wet? No. The sound it makes. Yes. Then Acacia rejects Jack because she's in love with someone else. And Jack is heartbroken. But honestly, at this point, we all probably knew it was him she was in love with. He asks Acacia again about this guy that she likes. And by her description, Jack assumes that it's Joe. And then they have a little quarrel. Soon enough, he realizes it was him all along and reveals it to her with the help of his stage play friend. They agree to run away together. And Jack even trusts her enough to give her the key to his heart, which he needs to wind up his heart or else he dies. But as soon as they were about to run away, Joe pops up and ruins everything. He tells her that Jack poked his eye out and that Jack will die if he falls in love. So she leaves him and Jack tries to rip his own heart out. I swear, I'm not making this up, this is weird. And then he asks for it to be replaced for a new one, saying that he wants to wind it up to zero and never fall in love again. But alas, he can't, and now he might die because the key is with Miss Acacia, who ran off with stupid old Joe. Jack goes to Edinburgh where Madeline is to get his heart fixed or replaced, but Acacia runs back to give Jack the key, but he wasn't there, so she follows him back to Edinburgh. There, Jack finds out that Madeline was already dead, which leaves him more heartbroken emotionally than he already is. There he sits by Madeline's grave as he freezes in the cold. Acacia comes in to wind his heart again, but he rejects the key and throws it away, claiming that From now on, whatever happens to me, I will only have myself to blame. And they kiss and everything freezes, and Jack climbs each snowflake. The end. Now let's talk about the story first. I think the story is confusing and intriguing at the same time. The pacing in the middle part of his child days was slow and hard to sit through. But as he meets Miss Acacia, everything picks up just by a little bit. The relationship of Acacia and Jack was somewhat adorable. Some might say it goes a bit too fast, but in a movie with this short span of time to work on a budding romance, I'd say they did well enough to make me want Acacia and Jack to be together. As much as I like the two of them together, the conflict or at the very very least, the dialogue was frustrating, especially in Miss Acacia's end, and not in a good way. Hear me out. Their conflict was that Joe is trying to split them up, saying that Jack hurt him and that he kept it from her and her intention of leaving Jack was because she doesn't want him to die. But her dialogue portrays more on the first part rather than the kind, compassionate second one that I mentioned earlier. As I took time to watch their argument again, I get that she only wanted to save Jack from death, but her line that Jack is selfish because he'd make her a murderess was such a slap in the face. I like Miss Acacia. I do. But that line made me want Jack to find someone better. I don't know if it's a translation thing, but if she said something different in the original dub or other dubs, do let me know. Also, I would have loved it if Jack was the one to walk away and not Acacia because I feel like it would have given Jack the self-respect that he deserves and not always the one apologizing when he doesn't have to, just so that they could patch things up between them. But no! Yeah, Acacia was the one to walk away again. As I've said, the story drags on, and I thought it would have been better if they picked out a few things. But as I've watched the ending, which I'll talk about in a moment, I realized that everything at the start was a build-up. Him meeting and instantly falling in love with a random girl, which I thought was really weird and dumb, was actually a payoff to this cute reunion plotline for the two. And the years of bullying was a build-up to their fight at the end, where Jack always had his anger under control. But when it comes to Acacia and Joe, he always loses his temper. And I wondered why they took so much time in the movie with Madeline, only for her to disappear throughout most of the movie. And the payoff for that was the ending. I was about to write a review complaining about this movie, but the ending just wrapped everything nicely. It, I can't even explain why. Now I know there's debate whether he died and went to heaven or continued to live, but personally, my interpretation of this was that he died and went to heaven, which I absolutely loved. I did not want it to end with them kissing and that saves the day and it's just a happy ending overall. Instead, we got Madeline dead and Jack grieving until he gets this bittersweet death of finding one love while losing another. And the way they portrayed him dying, if he did because it wasn't confirmed, was artistic. Instead of him freezing and motionless, everything else was the one that's frozen and he climbs a snowflake to where I assume is heaven. I must admit though, the ending didn't make me cry like how some of you guys mentioned in the comments that you did. And that says a lot because I cry super easily, but it did leave me awestruck and amazed that the movie 
movie had the balls to kill the main character. Which wasn't even an ass pull to shock the audience, it was a build up to him being broken hearted, to having his mother die that broke him emotionally, and by the clock manifesting his emotions, also physically. Also I feel like it was a callback or a twist to how Madeline tells Jack how love feels like. Well multiply your suffering a hundredfold and you'll still have no idea the pain love causes. And the greater your love, the greater the pain. First you sense an ache. I expected Jack to die because of his love for Acacia, but he loved his mother very much and hearing how she's dead was the last blow to his heart. The greater the love, the greater the pain. I think it's poetic how he chose to die next to his mother's grave. Honestly, I feel like even if Acacia winds up his heart, his heart will still be broken, metaphorically and literally because he tried to rip it out earlier. All in all, it's just great. Now if you have any other interpretations of the ending, do share it down since this is a piece of art that can be interpreted in many ways, depending on your view of the movie. Movie. Now let's talk about the animation. At first I was not fond of the animation. Until now I'm not. Baby Jack is still haunting me in my sleep. Look at this fugly monstrosity. But slowly and surely his design does get more okay as he grows up. The models with their large heads and eyes always made me feel uneasy. And at first I did not like it. But as the movie went on, I see that every little detail of this movie had some sort of uneasiness along with its beauty. It made me eerily fascinated with the character designs as well as their quirks like how Jack has a clock heart, Acacia has those thorns growing out of her, and Joe speaks in dumb rhymes. I must admit I'm not impressed by change, it's stability for me. I take no risks and mercilessly crush any threat to my authority. Yeah, I'll talk about those quirks later in the character segment, but the movement, let's talk about that. It did not age well, but it wasn't bad. Trust me, I've seen worse. The rendering is wonderful though, it made me curious what this movie would have looked like with normal proportions, or at least more eye-pleasing ones, but then again, that would take away the uneasy fascination this movie brought to the table. That drew me in and made me just glue my eyes to the screen. When I say glue my eyes, I don't mean that I'm enamored by this movie or I loved it so much, but because I have so many questions in my head and I just kept watching to see where this movie would go, hoping that my questions will get answered but it didn't. But I'm not complaining, I liked it. I can tell by the cinematography, pacing and framing of each scene that it was well thought out. Even the transitions were like a piece of art. I didn't know what they meant but I'm curious to know what and why it was like that. It doesn't make sense hence I stuck around for more. The animation gave off that vibe along with the story. There's also a lot of symbolism and creativity in the animation like how when they feel in love they fly in the sky and it's either in song or not. It's weird, but interesting. There's just something about weirdness that you can't explain and it's just fascinating. I don't think I can discuss much of the music in the movie because none of it stuck to me and I didn't like any of it as much but the song of Madeline singing the rules for Jack was like a creepy lullaby and I enjoyed it. Mainly because they played it twice in the movie so it stuck a bit. Also Miss Acacia's singing in a different language was great too, I love her singing. Other songs were forgettable, like the one in the train. Honestly, I just did not like that train chase scene at all. And also the one where they sing about Andalusia. Though I feel like I didn't like it because of the translations, but the instrumental and the vibe of the song sounds really good. I listened to the original French version of the song and I liked it just a teeny tiny bit better than the English one, except the first song. Both had such different charms to it. The French one sort of emphasizes it being a cautionary set of rules and the breathy singing made me feel like Madeline is taking the utmost care of the fragility of the clock heart and Jack himself. <laughs> While the English one has this warmth and confidence in her voice that makes it reassuring that these rules will protect you if you follow them. Rule number two, keep your temper under control. I just found that part very interesting. Now let's talk about the characters. Of course, starting with Jack. Jack is an interesting guy. Throughout the movie, he's the same starry-eyed kid even as he is after the time skip. I find it interesting how by the start of the movie, he couldn't control his heart and by the end, he still couldn't. And he even went lengths to rip it out of him and want a new one. I can't say that I'm attached to his character or that his character is lovable, but after he's been beaten down to the ground for multiple times in the movie, especially near the end, you really can't help but just want the dude to be happy. Also Jack's voice actor in the English dub is Orlando Seal, which props to him he did amazing, I love his voice, but it did not fit the child Jack. His first appearance made me pause and go, whoa, that is not a voice of a child. Come on, come on everyone! All aboard for the round floor of the mountain, the great escape from the catacombs of the sky! 
It's way too deep for a kid. Orlando's voice did fit Jack after the time skip, but oh my gosh, is it weird as a kid. Speaking of older Jack, I mentioned that Jack and Acacia's relationship is cute, but sometimes it can be a bit... Eesh. I find it creepy when he snuck into Acacia's dressing room and caressed her dresses and hid like this. It's so creepy. If I was Acacia, I'd have a heart attack. He's just standing there. Menacingly. And then he tried to steal a kiss while Acacia was sleeping, which is a no, no, no. That's bad. That's bad, Jack. Bad. But while he was about to do it, Madeline keeps popping up in his head, which stops him. And I know it was supposed to be like him hesitating because Madeline told him he shouldn't, because that would be the death of him. But by the framing, and if you see the sequence out of context, it looks like he can't kiss the girl because he thinks of his mom. I don't want to explain it further, but you get what I mean. That's not the intention, obviously, but the way it was framed could be misinterpreted that way out of context. Next is Madeline. I love her character. You can tell that she really wants to protect Jack no matter what, and she felt like an actual mother for him. I'm not sure why, but she's somewhat related to Tears, and it was mentioned twice in the movie, and up to now, I can't conclude why and what it's about. First is when Jack asks if she started drinking Tears de liqueur after she got Jack. I think I'd lose my mind, my reason for living if I lost you. Do you see? Is that when you started on the Tears liqueur? Yes. More or less. And when she died, she placed her tears in a jar with the tag Distilled Tears. I want to know what that is. I need answers, okay? Anyway, I wondered why the movie spent so much time with Madeline only for her to disappear. And I get why. All those times were to get us attached to her. So by the end, when we learned she died not long after Jack left, it's also saddening for us. I'll admit I got a little bit down when they mentioned her dying and even made Joe explain what happened in detail. Speaking of Joe... Let's talk about this weird guy. Everyone is weird, but this guy, he takes the cake. He speaks in rhymes for some moments in the movie, most of his screen time too. It's hella weird, and he looks like an idiot. I know there's some kind of meaning or symbolism behind it as his character, but at my first watch, I can't take him seriously as a bully. Like, th this? This is a bully? A tall man-child in elementary who speaks in cryptic rhymes? All right. But yeah, he's only a small time antagonist in this movie, so he's meant to be disliked. You have proved your purpose, Joe. Run along with your one eye. Then we go to Miss Acacia. Now I find her interesting visually because when we first meet her, when Madeline confronts her after Jack fainted, she gasps and immediately thorns pop up around her. Every time she felt angry or nervous, there was always thorns. The word Acacia is the name of a shrub, so maybe it has something to do with it. Anyway, I liked her attitude at the start. She's calm and collected most of the time and by by the way she speaks, her words are sharp. She seems like a mature girl for most of the movie. But then the conflict of the movie happened and most of her words sounded a bit dumb. I mentioned this already, but her intentions were far from what she's saying. She wants to stay away from Jack to keep him alive, but she sounded so mean. And you can argue that she wants Jack to hate her so that they'd break up, but she kept blaming Jack for the things he has no control over or hasn't happened and even tells that it's for his own good, which you can cross out the she wants Jack to hate her because that's not it. Now the things that she blames Jack for that he has no control over for excusing hurting Joe when he specifically mentions that it was an accident and how again she tells Jack how selfish he is to make her a murderess like uh-huh. So in conclusion did I like this movie? Yeah surprisingly I did but not the reason you think. This movie is not for kids I'll say it now. A kid could watch it and enjoy it yeah but you can tell that the target audience for this movie was adults or young adults. There's a lot of symbolism or even phrases in the song like these let me clasp you close to me rip your clothes with my teeth or how in one quick shot while jack's clock is in smokes some kind of icing is on acacia's chest and then it disappears a second after. It's all weird as I've mentioned, but if you are interested in the weird, mundane, questionable stuff going on in this movie that I've mentioned, check it out! You can, you can check it out if you want. This movie is absolutely best watching alone instead of with friends or family because it is, it is hella weird. Maybe you can watch it with friends of similar liking though. But yeah, that's all for today's review. For the next one, I'll be asking my patrons for a movie of their choosing again. Also, I just got my silver play button so to everyone watching now i just want to say thanks so yeah thanks so much for my patrons i'm still going on in this channel because of them look at these people dang so freaking cool